Welcome to our 39th episode where we are going to be looking at a multi-screen game called Blackjack. Where the gameplay is all about scoring 21 with playing cards. But before we get to examine this shining beauty, we'll need to answer last episode's photo quiz question that we on our channel like to call, what in the world? And I think this one was super easy, but I might be wrong. It was the second and last revision of the original Game Boy, the Japanese exclusive called the Game Boy Light. Offered for sale on the 14th of April 1998 it was way ahead of its time by having a backlit screen as standard, we'd have to wait until 2005 for the Game Boy SP for it to be offered once more. Heading back over to the star of today's show Black Jack was first offered for sale on February 15th back in 1985. The production run was lackluster and only about 250,000 units were sold. Nintendo followed up the game called Pinball with today's star of the show, the game and watch called Blackjack. Blackjack was the second non-character based game offered by Nintendo in the Game & Watch series. As the name suggests it is a portable adaptation of one of the world's most popular card games. And I guess it's worth noting that this handheld clearly harks back to Nintendo's ancestral heart which was playing cards. In this version the dealer is the CPU, and you play against the computer. Players' cards are displayed on the lower screen and the dealer's cards on the upper screen. Throughout the game the dealer will ask you questions about what you want to do with your hand, just answer them by pressing the appropriate buttons. You started with $500 and played a normal blackjack rules, and you can bet a maximum of $100 a round. There are two different game choices, these are Game Mode A and Game Mode B. Game Mode B is not merely the normal more difficult version of Game Mode A, which up until this game was the standard approach, no, Game Mode B is a different game completely, and in it a bonus game plays where you try to match various numbers. I guess it best resembles a slot machine, or fruit machine or one-armed bandit, in that the screen displays a variety of numbers that quickly change from 3 through to 7, and you must try to stop each window or panel cell on the appropriate and matching number. It takes good timing and very fast reflexes to stop the changing numbers on the correct and matching panel. Once again in Game Mode B you start with $500. The maximum winnings possible is effectively what most other games would call their maximum high score, and for this game that is $9,999 and as an aside you are allowed to draw a maximum of 5 cards. You can use the double down button and double your bet when it is flashing, but you need to have more than twice the amount of your bet in your wallet to do this. It's suggested that you only do it if you have 10 or 11 as you will only get one more card. To get a good score risk a lot of money early and then take it easy. If you lose a lot of money in the beginning it doesn't matter as you can always start again. In Game Mode B, remember the larger the number, the shorter the display time and as more numbers are stopped from the left, the more quickly the remaining numbers change on the screen. In Game Mode A money is added or subtracted from your wallet depending on what your bet was and if you won or lost the game. In Game Mode B, you only lose half of the money for the intended combination if you get the last number wrong, otherwise if no combination is made then $25 is deducted from your wallet. If you hold in Game Mode A or Game Mode B buttons the highest previous score will be displayed. Also if the unit is left unattended after the game is over, the time display will appear in about 4 minutes. A game is not interrupted even if the time button or any other game buttons are depressed during gameplay. By pressing the ACL switch or removing the button cell batteries all previously held high scores from the internal memory of the unit will be permanently erased. So as a form of summary, the game and watch multi-screen called Blackjack is the 10th game in the 4th and popular series of game and watch games published by Nintendo, also known as the multi-screen series, consisting of a total of 15 titles. Blackjack is important as it represents the last multi-screen GAND game to be released for sale in Japan. After this unit, no further game and watches were ever released there, which always seemed a little strange to me. As previously mentioned Nintendo's core business for nearly a century, was producing playing cards, today's game is an electronic version of the card game called Black Jack which is about reaching a number as close to 21 as possible with the cards that are dealt to you. If your adversary, in this case the dealer is closer to 21 than you, or if you go over 21, then you lose. Given the production code of BJ60, Black Jack was Nintendo's 46th game and watch. The instructions booklet then goes on to cover the table of contents and there is a small schematic illustration of the handheld in its open format that helps with labeling the various parts and their functions. The how to play section of the booklet goes into details such as, whether to hit or stand on any given hand, the function and restrictions on doubling down, how to register your bet, how the wallet works, shuffling the deck and much more. On pages 7 and 8 the booklet explores the actual game procedures and how to bet up to a maximum. 
Pages 9 and 10 use the well-proven comic book cartoon strip illustration style of instruction to further explain the finer gameplay details available to the gambler. While pages 11 and 12 visually show what happens when the deck is shuffled, and how alarms will sound if the player is running short on money and their bet exceeds the cash available in their wallet. And once again we see good use of the comic book cartoon illustration style instruction method for game mode B on pages 13 and 14. With Game Mode B's instructions continuing on pages 15 and 16 we finish up with a precautionary statement. And the rear page of the booklet defines the working specifications which include temperature tolerance and battery parameters. Here we can see an example of a new old stock game which is complete with its inserts and batteries, alongside the larger retail shipping cart and we call a shipper. Blackjack was never classed as a success for Nintendo, and as you might know the company was quite anti-gambling later on. However, I have found a true spiritual successor to today's star and focus of our show, and that is in this handheld scene here, which is licensed by Nintendo and dates from 1999 sold under the MGM brand, Nintendo is recognized on both packaging and console. It is actually pretty amazing, not just due to its similarity to the game and watch we've looked at today, but mostly because it used Nintendo's Panorama series technology to achieve a dazzling display. This really is an honorary game and watch. And that just about wraps up today's interesting episode, I hope you enjoyed it, but before we go through the obligatory begging and requests for likes and follows, we must ask once again the photo quiz question that this channel likes to call what in the world? I must fess up here, this is really super difficult, but it is a Nintendo licensed product. If you think you know what it is, then tell me in the comments section below, or as an interest only event, join me in our next episode to find out. And here we are once again, seeking a little payback for our efforts, I'd ask ever so kindly that you hit that like button, better still sign up to follow our channel by simply pushing the follow button and activating that alarm setting so that you can be informed of any new content and competitions. But mostly, thank you for watching. And see you all real soon.